James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we are here. It, it is the end of, uh, well, you wouldn't think it by the weather, but it is the end of summer, 2015, the end, the end of, um, no, not the end of summer, the, the uh, end of August, just about, but the weather's still hot. Usually we get pre-Labor uh, Day weekend uh, kind of weather, you know, uh, but it is cooling down a bit. Huh. All right get the formalities over with um oh before I I get the for wait, let me get the formalities over with. greetings everyone my name is uh, James P Madonna of Mega Life 21 the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet and uh, I would like to introduce my illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of newsletters censored in 1977 the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Good. Now, we are coming to you from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. I would like to say hello to my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Greetings, Miho. Um, and, um... You know, um, I say this every year, but the seasons fly by very fast. The weeks, the months, the years. It always happens before you know it. You graduated from high school, and then before you know it, you're middle-aged, and then mm. before you know it, you're in your golden years. Before you know it, you're a geezer. And, yeah, and, and my uncle, uh, uh, my Aunt Helen's uh, I believe cousin, cousin Henry, who's deceased, used to say, the only thing golden about the golden years is the urine. Well, if you have enough B vitamins, complex, you know, variboflavin, then yeah. It'll be pretty golden. Otherwise, it's white. You know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I was shopping um, in the big Korean market called H Mar. I needed green tea. I ran out. And I noticed the uh, the bee products, you know, the the honeys of uh, different kinds mm -hmm. of honey. Uh, of course, the uh, unpasteurized raw wildflower honey. The raw honey was the most expensive. Mm -hmm. Very expensive. I mean, real honey. Um, not the crap in the supermarket. Now. They had powdered uh, what they called cactus honey powder. I, I, I found out that the government, I guess the FDA, allows companies to call it cactus honey even if, if it's nothing but uh, agave nectar, which is the agave. Sugar. Is the rye. Is the, it, the agave is the plant they make tequila from. It's, it's a desert. It looks like an aloe. Uh, it looks, it's a desert plant. And uh, they derive this... I don't know if it's low glycemic, but they derived this uh, sweetener called agave nectar, and uh, they the government actually allows them to call it cactus honey, and it's not cactus honey. So I look at the bag, I read the ingredients of every company. Oh boy. What do I find? I find that that there is no uh, assurance that it's honey. And there are other ingredients, other fillers, which are just cheap starch, carbohydrates, and other sweeteners mixed in with the so-called cactus honey powder, which they claim may not come from a cactus blossom. So now they're telling you the truth. They're calling it cactus honey, but the contents does not come necessarily from a cactus blossom. What I'm trying to say no. is, there's your deregulated America for you, deregulated companies. Thank you, Republicans. You can owe, you know, you can give thanks to them for this. 
not getting what the label says, not getting a quality product. There are quality products out there, but you'll, you'll have to pay more. So I just want to get that off. And that's a, our first Chisler's Hall of Shame inductee. The food companies out there putting out B products, but they're all guilty. They're all guilty. All the whole entire food industry. Okay. Which uh, our food should be one place where there should be no pollution, corruption, or etc. But thanks to deregulation, of course, they can do what they want with our food. Yeah. Of course, the ideal situation would be a pristine organic farm. Uh, in a pristine part of the country uh, without any dangers of pesticides you know of any kind DDT uh, uh, organically grown but real organic food not USDA uh, s labeled organic as a as an aside uh, locally here um, I'm forgetting the uh, the city exactly, but a <clears throat> a DPW manager in one of our local cities here told his people to pour pesticides on this robin's nest. Oh, for God's to sense. kill the eggs and the bird or whatever was in the in the nest. Well. The people refused, so he did it. Now he's being up on charges of animal cruelty. Good, but I, you know, I don't know. There, there, it, there could be a year in jail well, if he really gets well, hammered. But I don't know. I was told how far by a, go. I was told by a relative that some landscaper in the the Florida Keys uh, was planning on shooting iguanas with a BB gun because the iguanas were eating the flowers. Mm. Well, that's what iguanas do. They like brightly colored things. I mean, I don't know. Well, this is what was, is happening while man, man is encroaching upon the animals' habitats. Yeah, because of the greed of real estate and, and building strip malls and this what have you. What whatever you know yeah. uh, look, look at a lot of places like uh, Las Vegas and stuff like that nobody should be living there there's no water it was a complete there's no water. It, was, it was a complete wasteland yeah at one time. before Desert. what was a lucky Luciani or no nah, it was the or? flamingo I think the the flamingo the, uh, hotel well, the mafia you know they they built it up Mo Green Mo Green and all that stuff. the first the first casino the first hotel casino that uh, was a big gamble in itself, they took a, a huge chance oh, yeah, sure. trying to build a resort there. Was I think it was the the, the old Flamingo was is one of the. Uh, you know, I mean, of course, it's, it was long since torn down, but but uh, that area is a desert. That you you have to pump water from either uh, uh, Lake Tahoe in the north or or the um, Mead. what is it Lake Mead. The yeah. reservoir, you know, and yeah. then you and but that's drying up. Yeah, and so is the Colorado River. Yeah, and if it don't dry up, the old EPA wants to pollute it. You know, California, <laughs> the whole. You might as well say America's West is uh, running out of water from climate change. Yeah, it, it's running out of trees now too because it's on fire. Climate it's like change. seven states on yeah. fire. Well, everything's bone dry. Yeah. I mean, climate change, global warming, that scientists have been uh, uh, talking about for a long time, and Republicans uh, turned their back on. Yeah, only 97% um, of the um, scientists. Oh, I heard, um, I heard uh, Canada sent uh, um, planes and equipment and, 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 and the crew to help out with the California fires. Because the Republican Party, the Republican Congress, cut funding that will enable the United States to fight this fire. So Canada uh, man, is is there know. to help. I salute the country of Canada, people, 
in the United States pick on you and, and, and mock you and make jokes about you, but I salute you out of respect for what you did. All right? Yeah. It's a socialist country, too, you know. Just like, um, who was it? Fidel Castro and Hugo Chavez offered to help the Hurricane Katrina victims and I think Andrew in Florida. I mean, the uh, the big hurricanes. They And G.W. Bush said no to all of them. Well, for years, Mr. Hugo Chavez, I mean, he was uh, with Joe Kennedy. I mean, he was, he was uh, uh, you know, giving free oil to uh, the United States. Uh, to, to the poor. Poor, yeah. poor and seniors living on a fixed income yeah. to heat their home. Yes. Yes, yes. And, 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 and Bush... But we the, don't like the, that. The Republicans didn't like that because no. uh, that's our capitalism, and capitalism is supposed to. What the fuck is it supposed to do? <laughs> it's supposed to rise the livings of many people. <laughs> it, it doesn't help the poor or the no, middle no, class. No, I've been trying to people. explain this to people oh, online yeah. so many times. Capitalism never did a damn thing for the poor or middle class. Well, they have not. Yeah. You know this whole thing about. You know, being self-made, you know, going from rags to riches, you you have to be connected heavily. You have to be, um, you have to know the you right people. You have to people. have your daddy give you the money to start your business. You got to have daddy, you, you know? got you got unless you're a silver spooner and you got your father there. Okay, now, uh, of course, all Republicans have a permanent a uh, uh, home in the Chisler's Hall of Shame. Mm -hmm. They just happen to be there forever. So are corporate American CEOs. Is it a gated community? It's pretty gated, uh, okay. uh, yeah. But they're in the Chisler's Hall of Shame. Yeah. All right, here's the grand finale that I was talking to you about Wednesday. Uh -huh. One of the biggest inductees I would um, uh, ever make in the Chisler's Hall of Shame is this. This is my big kahuna. Mm. This um, um, retired older couple uh, by the name of Joe and Kathy from Bergen County, New Jersey. They, um, they purchased uh, a new Acura from uh, a local dealership. Okay. They love the car, of course, you know. Uh -huh. it, it's a Honda. It's a. It's a. It's an upscaled Honda Accord, is what it is. You know. So, an Acura is a Honda. It sells itself. Okay, fine. Joe and Kathy, uh, uh, by accident, when they opened the trunk, they noticed they had no spare tire and no donut. Oh. Uh. They call the dealership, and they tell them, oh, "We have no spare tire. We have no donut." forgot to give it to us. The dealership says, oh no, 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 we don't give spare tires or no. donuts any longer. Ah. Now, Joe and Kathy say, now, you know, mind you, since I was a little tot, cars always had a spare tire and then later on the donut. Mm -hmm. Okay, Joe and Kathy says, what if we get stuck? What do we do? Oh, you, you, have, to, oh, you have to call us to get towed. Ah, ah, you have to call us to get towed. How convenient. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, do we have to pay for the towing? Yes. Yes, indeed. Ah, I see a pattern developing here. Really? Yeah, good old American retail capitalism at its best. Hey, they're creating jobs, no? Now, you would think, now, as soon as you think that car dealers could not be any sleazier and low down, you haven't heard everything until now. So... <laughs> Maybe we should go to Ray Katina. Joe, no, no, you know what he told him? He says, that's across the board. The, all the oh, car, yeah, of course. All, all the car yeah. dealers are doing it yeah, now. Yeah, You're yeah, not yeah. getting it. It's getting to get in despair. Nobody to stop them. Right, now. Now. Oh, you go, oh, you gotta get towed. Oh, how convenient. I can't change my tire now. Gotta get towed. Okay, now, just like you gotta pay for air in, in most gas stations. Most gas stations. All right. So Joe and Kathy asked the dealership, uh, well, is it possible for us to uh, purchase a spare or donut that will fit in the trunk? Oh, yes, the dealership says, we have a donut 
it'll cost you four hundred dollars. Ah! Four hundred dollars for that oh little my. itty bitty uh, a donut, a uh, temporary. You can buy a spare tire for Wes. So I told Joe and Kathy, I says I would go to all the auto centers, like a uh, 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 Strauss and uh, AutoZone, and Bet I would more. ask them, go online. Look for a generic donut spare that will fit your Acura wheel. Do not, under any circumstances, get suckered into paying $400 for a damn donut spare. So, shame on you, mega shame on you, Acura dealerships and all United States car dealerships, you all are miserable sleazy low lives Remember your skunks your scoundrels your falabuto what that's japanese what's Honda, japanese they're not yeah but it i don't know they if just it, happen to be but, in america but i don't know if it's japan that's omitting the donut no it's not because they're assembled they, they're they're now assembled in all here you said it's across the board well the, the, the u.s but dealerships the japanese don't have to do it the, yeah, U.S. dealerships, it's across the board. Right. Now now your Toyotas and your Hondas are being assembled here, I guess, to avoid the, the taxes or something, the import. Uh, Ford wants to build a uh, company in Mexico. Yeah, a few billion dollars. Yeah. yeah. I know, Donald Trump was, uh, yeah. was ranting about it. This is one of the things that Donald Trump is actually telling the truth about. One of the things. Yeah. Now, uh, what he was now wrong they're about. They're eating our lunch, man. They're eating our lunch. But what he was wrong about was, in, like, instead of taxing them a 30%, just 35, don't. 35, you said. 35%. Just don't allow them to bring the products back into the United States. Bingo! That's called regulation, though. Regulation is a bad word in, 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 in Washington, D.C. A very bad a lot word. Of tricky, a lot of tricks up their sleeve. Like, you know, the H-1B workers visa where they import people. And, and like, like the banner said, it's not that the United States does not have qualified no, employee, not. qualified workers and professionals. It's all, it's all greed. It's all That's out of greed. Right. So what do you, what do you it's think? bringing in somebody who's going to do your job for half yeah. the pay. Right. Or, That's all it is. Or less, or for free if you're in a privatized prison who Bernie Sanders is against. He wants to abolish yes, privatized of prisons because he knows why they're there. Of course. Now, um, um, this Republican, his last name is Trent. I, I should have I wrote his first name down, but, but it's typical Republican insanity. He actually says the Bible, he, he criticizes the, the Pope for not being able to interpret the Bible. And uh, he says, he's, of course, he's against the Pope telling the rich that you, you must help the poor. You know, it's, it's the Christian thing to do, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. This guy, this Republican, uh, Trent, uh, he says uh, the Pope doesn't understand the Bible. There's nothing in the Bible that says we're obligated to help the poor. That's correct. He couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> no kidding. We... We have uh, we have several of those uh, scriptures on the first page of the newsletter. Every issue, and I have all the. And you can get hundreds of more. And I and I jammed a whole lot more into the folder on our Facebook group, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. It's chock full of uh, Bible verses that command the poor. I mean the rich to help the poor, and even. To sell, uh, I think Jesus told somebody to sell your everything, your worldly possessions, and give come to follow me. And give it to the poor and follow me. E but even so, under God's economics, you have the commandment that if you own, you own your land and you harvest your land, leave the edges. So that the yeah. poor can come in right. and gather to eat. Now what does he mean? God does not command that we take care of 
the poor and the uh, 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 widows and the orphans, etc. The man is a nut. Okay? Yeah, like uh, 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 John Hagee and Mike uh, uh, Huxterby, as I call him, <laughs> and Rick Sanitarium. That's a good one. Huxterby. I taught it out last night. Uh, um, the Oh, that, that idiot on the group says uh, under the banner about the Republican Trent, what he said, says, uh, oh, you're talking about your verses that come from the the um, the St. James uh, 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 a Bible in English who that was controlled by King Henry VIII. He, 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 he King James was not Henry VIII. King James. It's King James, not St. Yeah, James. King James. And he's trying to say, I know what he was getting at. He was trying to say, well, your verses are not accurate. What he's trying to Henry say VIII is what some people say to say. Oh, well, there's all kinds of Bibles. No, there's one with translations. Right. Now, some translations aren't that good. Some are better than others. And Henry VIII. But it's all one. Henry, Henry VIII was yeah. not did not rewrite. Henry the, VIII has nothing to do with the Bible. The King, King the James. King James Bible, number one, okay. and number two. I, I said to him, "Well, what, what Bible do you recommend? One of those rewritten conservative Revised. Bibles?" Yes, yes. So he was an instigator. Obviously, he was a teabagger. Uh, um, um, he was a troll, and he ceased after that. Most of the time, you'll find that they'll say. Uh, oh well, that's Old Testament. See, they 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 just go by the New Testament. Yeah. Unless, of course, they're attacking gays or something. Then they go back to the Old Testament and use that. Gays and gay. prostitutes, and yeah. you know, they then they, because the Old Testament says you know to put them to death. Yeah. You know, so they're all for that. People that are not like them, they're all for that. But, uh, but they don't understand the context of why God said to put him to death. He was getting them into the into Canaan, mm -hmm. the promised land. And he said that if you leave these people alive, they will corrupt you. And you will forget about me and you'll have your golden calves again, etc. And that's why he wanted to get rid of them. Now these people that he would have got rid of, you know, they're gonna have their time to be resurrected. So it's no big deal, per se. But you gotta understand the context. God was trying to make this nation of ancient Israel into a, what all nations should be. A model. And if he left those people there. A prototype, a model of, yeah. And he left those people there, he knew what would happen. Right. All that shit would go down the tubes. It did anyway. Anyway, um, everything we've been talking about is part of our new series called Capitalism in a Conch Shell. Capitalism in a Conch Shell. There's the conch. Feel that energy coming from King Neptune. You oh, see that new he has a lot of bad things to say about Republicans, and rightly so. Anyway. You see that new commercial with David Hasselhoff? <laughs> he, he puts a conch up to his ear. Then. Whoa! They have them running from Baywatch, you know, doing the Baywatch. Yeah, stuff. with that that little buoy, that little yeah, um, um, dressed um, in red and everything, you know. So Caitlyn Jenner had a very bad car crash and somebody died. About a year ago, yeah. Oh, that was a year ago. Yeah. But anyway, she could go to jail. Well, I'd like to see uh, the uh, people guilty of war crimes go to prison. Ah, uh, come on! It's why well, how many years already? Fourteen years. No, 2003. Seven and four. Eleven, eleven years already. And they're still walking the streets. See, um, I was trying to... Uh, it, it might have been satire about, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, the banner that says uh, Michelle Obama wanted to rename one of the rooms in the White House to the Obama suite and not and take the word Lincoln off of it, Abraham Lincoln. It might have been satire, but anyway, um, people gave their opinions and uh, you know one person was was just you know once in a while you get these people that 
they're so passionate about defending Hillary Clinton mm. or Michelle Obama or Barack Obama and you know uh, just for the sheer fact that they're Democrats and and they, but they're so passionate about it like like nobody else has any validity in, in politics except a Democrat and I'm trying to tell them that the two-party system is made up of corporatists they have all sold out to the fat cats and uh, they're corrupt and uh, forget about it you know uh, I mean there are many sellout Democrats now that have come out of the woodwork and and I mentioned the first two years Obama was in office I mean granted Barack Obama is a fantastic president one of the finest we ever had he, he cut the deficit uh, the Bush deficit in half um, maybe more he, he's done a lot of fantastic things but the first two years he was in office the, Dem the Democrats had control of the House and the Senate and the White House and we could have had the single-payer uh, uh, universal health care and we could have anything you want we could have taxed the rich with the original la, 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 with, with, la, la, la. with the original tax rate and give all the tax breaks to the middle class where it rightfully belongs but guess what that did not happen in the first two years no. and I said that to him I, got I wonder no, why I got no rebuttal I wonder why yeah I wonder why uh, palms were greased by the insurance companies maybe health I wonder why oh well of, for writing Obamacare yeah, yeah why why, for that uh, shit. why uh, at, at all at back then all I heard was from Nancy Pelosi and, and Barack Obama is bipartisanship compromise bipartisanship compromise and and it's like uh, but they didn't need it and they were so worried about protecting the health insurance companies who gives a rat's ass about health insurance companies? They're sleazy scum anyway. Those who get campaign uh, contributions from them. It's like Wall what Street. What else? Nobody on Wall Street has seen a, a prison cell from the inside uh, either. Uh, uh, the, Teflon, the Teflon Wall Street. Yeah, yeah. You know, but... Uh, oh, oh I, I forgot the... My little toy. I'll get it later. My little pony. My little toy. My little pony. Now, nah, me do. Me do. It's right uh, over here. What is this now? Oh. What'd you think it was? I don't know. It, if it's Some kind of toy that if, I might if, have been if interested it, if in. If it's here, <laughs> if it's here, you must know every toy in the house. Forget about everything you've heard about trickle down economics. Forget it. What we have is siphon up to the top 20% economics. Siphon up the devil's economics. No trickle down. Oh, that video that says five minute video with Ronald Reagan that changed everything. What was he signing? Uh, I, I was not able to play it. Oh, you you having issues with your real player? I'm not, no, it ain't real player. It's Facebook. You know what? I'm glad you said that. You know the 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 glitches on Facebook never end. I bet that big nosed, eagle beak Zionist geek scrawny scum Mark Zuckerberg has the cheapest, most low budget people and programmers, maybe outsourced, running his website blood-sucking, parasitic Zionist, piece of shit. And, and the only reason why the attractive Asian married you is because you're, you're was he a billionaire? Rich, yeah. You're, you're filthy rich. But you're, a, you're a conniving geek, just like Bill Gates is. Screwed your way to the top. Stole ideas. See, I, I noticed that that's a trend now. Even in my uh, my physical fitness group, there are people who pick everyone's brains, who take everyone's good ideas, and they put it into their plan. Uh -huh. They themselves and they call it their own, but they never ever give kudos or credit it's to the plagiarism. 
to the originator. Plagiarism. Thank you. If your stuff is not copyrighted, you know they'll 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 uh, like a like a vulture. Yeah. So it, so if somebody you know I know people like that they go around they'll pick your brains. Mm -hmm. They'll they'll take ideas from maybe your videos or your instructional booklet, and they'll put together their own plan that's going to revolutionize the industry. But they'll never give credit to to where they got it. And because they want the credit. Example, Joe Weeder. The reason why Joe Weeder was the master blaster is because, not because he invented the Weeder system, no. Bob Hoffman, former U.S. Olympic weightlifting coach and, and the owner, and I think the founder of the York Barbell Company in New York, Pennsylvania, mm. where they have the uh, Weightlifting Hall of Fame Museum. He trained Joe Weeder on the East Coast. Joe Weeder was trained by the York system by Bob Hoffman. Uh -huh. They even went into business together in partnership in one of the first muscle magazines mm -hmm. on the East, in the world, but it was, you know, on the East Coast. Then when Joe Weider moved to um, LA, to Southern California, he denounced any affiliation with Bob Hoffman. He did not give him credit for anything. And then he came out with the Weider system, the master blaster. Now, it's plagiarism. A lot of people do it. Yeah. They, 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 Unfortunately. These are like, these are like uh, very insecure people who have to pretend that they did something first. You know, a lot of them, first. a lot of them are um, not very impressive, the, the plagiarists. A lot of them are short, uh, uh, average looking men. Maybe, maybe there's a, 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 a uh, masculinity <laughs> Problem. There's a, a maybe a Napoleonic complex. There's something. Caught, yes, I believe it is insecurity because they're not impressive. Some of them are just lazy too. You the, know? the plagiarists are not like what you would call impressive, dynamic looking. Like even Biden and uh, uh, NLK, Martin Luther King. They they were accused of plagiarism during their schooling years taking other people's words without attributing them. There's nothing no. shameful about giving tribute to the source yeah. of your knowledge. Or just surround it, them with quotes, for God's sakes. That's what, all. What is wrong with telling people who said what you said? You There's go. nothing wrong with it. If, if Teddy Roosevelt said something, say, this is a quote by Teddy Roosevelt. And so on. This is a quote by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, or so, on, or Eisenhower, or or um, or Thomas Jefferson, or whatever. John Adams. Say it. There's nothing shameful about giving, yeah. uh, honoring other people that came before you and that you learned from. You you know mm -hmm. everybody has mentors. You know, and, mm -hmm. uh, 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 but quite often, don't don't ever meet your hero because you'll be disappointed. Uh -huh. It's true. That's I, the I, I mean, I mean, as far as their work goes, they could be geniuses. But if you get to know one personally and share an apartment with them, you, you it'll destroy your opinion of them. There are a lot of weird, wacky, eccentric geniuses out there. Uh, uh, one of which has the initials GN, and then we'll leave it at that. Anyway. Let us sink our teeth into these readings, and we have a lot of extra readings from the past couple of weeks. Uh -huh. We the same amount. No, we don't. Yes. No, we don't, because we had a big argument last time. Yeah. Well, and we didn't get a chance to, to cover, you know, yeah, to cover the, the, the material. The, the material readings. must be covered. The material. The readings are current events. And they grow stale. Well, we don't want we we want universal topics. We don't want you sometimes know, Johnny come lately ham and egg. You know sometimes, but most times we have to deal with current events. Okay, shoot. Go ahead. Some polls show Bernie Sanders surging close behind Hillary Clinton in the race for the Democratic nomination. I thought he surpassed Hillary. 
No, not yet. Well, then people are, uh, there's a little wishful thinking on, on the internet then. Yet Clinton continues to receive almost all publicity. No. Almost all publicly made endorsements from the elected uh, Democrats. And, and, and you can only, you can take a wild guess and I bet you'll be right. Why? <laughs> the growing of popularity of Sanders shows there are clear doubts over Clinton's authenticity and commitment to progressive ideals. She's a corporatist. She's in bed with Monsanto. Maybe more. One would expect this to be mirrored in at least some minor fashion, with similar variance in opinion among the establishment members elected by these very same hesitant constituents. How do we account for such a wide gap in sentiment between party constituents and their elected officials? It would seem to be a case of pragmatic politicians playing calculated odds at the expense of democratic ideals. But since when has placing all your eggs in one basket triumphed as an effective strategy, especially considering a primary candidate who is prone to scandal? U.S. Senator Cory Booker, Democrat of New Jersey, has endorsed Clinton. Well, Cory Booker, when he was mayor of Newark, he 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 schmoozed with uh, corporatist people. I mean, with with uh, he he's not as progressive as you might think. Democrats are encouraged to reach out to U.S. Senator Bob Menendez. Democrat New Jersey and the state's six Democratic members of Congress and advise them to fully consider the will of their constituents. The ascendancy of Sanders and the vulnerability of a one candidate party. Oh yeah? Well, let me tell you something. Regardless, if this person who wrote this is pro Clinton? I might as well throw them into what? No, they're not. That's what they're saying. Okay. We you should not put all of our eggs in one basket. This is proof that those people that present to you documentary videos about the New World Order and all this stuff. Let me tell you something. Democratic Party. May, may very well be the other side of the same coin. Corporatists, you know. And that includes, uh, I'm not totally uh, convinced yet, I don't have enough evidence, but um, people like Cory Booker, Robert Menendez, uh, all of the career politician Democrats could very well all be corporatists. Not as, not as bad as Republicans, but, you know. For the second time in two years, Governor Christie of New Jersey recently vetoed a key civil rights bill. What else is known? One which would have enabled me and other transgender New Jerseyans to correct our birth certificates. Yeah, but without need for painful, expensive, and sometimes unwanted surgery. No, correct your birth certificate. Let me tell you something. I don't care what issues you have, uh, physiologically or emotionally. When you came out of your mother's uh, bearded uh, chowder clam, when you were born, you were born a male pencil neck geeks. You were born a male. At that time, you were born a male. 
you decided to change your gender much later in life. Well, what if they had the two organs? Oh, you mean hermaphrodite? Yeah. Well, that's a toss-up, right? Well, yeah. No, it ain't. They, it's how they, how they, uh, how they feel about themselves. I don't care well, how they, they feel like a female. How they feel. Or Here they? we go. The pandering. Not you per se, but it, this is a um, a uh, ultra left kumbaya pandering. Uh, oh, I feel so sorry for them. Listen. No, I said how they feel about themselves. What about physiology? I feel male. What about physiologically? I feel female. What about get, having a hormonal test? How about proving that you're more female than a male? Well, th what if they had the? Uh, what if they're? In, uh, you say a male born a male and they have the hormones of the female they feel that they're female they want to be female exactly. and they take a test and they have more estrogen they what, what are you going to say well, then they're 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 uh, they're a, a female trapped in a man's body yeah that's what they're saying okay so let us change our birth certificates we're no longer males we're females good like luck. caitlin good luck she's a female as a result, the legal status of my gender remains up in the air, and I am at risk for bureaucratic flagging, travel concerns, and even possible health care coverage denial. Christie says enactment of this bill opens the door for fraud and confusion. Health care coverage denial? I'm trying to understand how... how one could be turned down, how a transgender can be turned down for our health care. Uh, health uh, companies turn, turn people down every single day for just, any excuse just, they want. Just, you see, therein lies the problem. No any, kidding. Any excuse but without they regulation, want. you're going to have oh, these problems. Oh, speaking of at any excuse they want, I forgot to mention what Billy Morrow said about the um, the situation that I was going to talk about the uh, Acura dealer with, without the spare tire and the donut. Mm -hmm. Billy Morrow says, uh, oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't talk about it, I wouldn't mention it. I says, why? They got screwed. Billy Morrow says, well, I wouldn't say they got screwed. What did they get? I says, well, what is your take on it? If they didn't get screwed, then, then what do you think happened? Oh, the, 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 the company, corporation has just changed their policy. That, that's hey, that's no, just hey, the way hey, it hey, is. Hey, it's whoa. company policy. It's a, I says, well, Billy, that so doesn't... The company's already in charge. So, Billy, I says, that doesn't make it ethical just because the company changes policy. Oh, well, that's how they decided to do things now. I says, well, that doesn't make it right. Who's the boss in this country? The company or me? Now, do you see... You, see, uh, it, you, you notice the right-wing tendencies coming from... Well, it's uh, not a right wing. It's not right wing tendencies. It's tendencies that they don't understand who is in charge. Just the same thing when uh, uh, you, you got to understand. You need to change the system because corporations and oligarchs are in charge right now. This is my country. Yeah, I'm in charge. That's the way it is because it's new. Bingo. It's new. That's the way it is. It's new company policy. Yeah. Well, what makes you think because a corporation decided on a policy to change its stance? I, what, what makes you think it's right? Yeah. Or ethical? Yeah. Or it's, should be in, the, in yeah. power to do that? This is our commercial voiceover artist, William Hamilton Moore the third. His father was a big wig uh, IBM executive, a career executive for his whole life. And, he doesn't uh, understand how the system has been corrupted. Yeah, I mean, what kind of and an answer? What kind of an answer is that? Oh, that's the company policy now. Right. That the, well, who cares? Well, genuflect to the company. To the yeah, it puts the company in charge. That's correct. But the State Motor Vehicle Commission already allows for gender change amendments to driver's licenses. What could be more confusing or more dangerous than one person carrying two mismatched government documents? Transgender people are not criminals or frauds. 
We are ordinary citizens requesting some degree of control over our own vital records. Three days after issuing his veto, the governor appeared on a national radio show and let his true colors show. Describing our desire to live happily in our own skin as beyond the pale. What, do you, what did you expect from a from a conservative Republican? I mean, of course they they're going to show their true colors. I mean, and stating that it doesn't make any sense to me, and that's why I vetoed it. This veto was a prejudicial act on the part of our governor. Doesn't make sense to him. To him. But they think they're in charge because this is a Christian nation. Well, they believe Mind in, you. They believe in fascist dictatorships. They believe okay. in their, their perception on that you're no good. Oh, you're gay. Oh, no, you're, you're not getting married. You're not getting married because I said so. Because you're no good. It's like, it's like their way of the highway. It's not like negotiation. They had their way once in America. It was called Jim Crow law. Right, they want to bring it back. Before the Civil Rights Act of 1965. Right. They had all this stuff. We got rid of it. They used to have slavery. We got rid of it. We didn't like it. Okay? I encourage our legislators especially primary sponsors like Senator Joseph Vitale, Vitale, Democrat of Middlesex County, and Assemblywoman Valerie Venere Hattel, Very Democrat Valerie, of Anglewood. Valerie Venereal Disease? Venere. Oh, Venere. To pursue a... You know what? To pursue an override. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> of the governor's veto. I'm moving my bells. <laughs> and in so doing, ensure that our great state remains as it has long been a welcoming and just place for all. You know, when it comes to politics and campaigning, why is every state the great state? The great state of Pennsylvania. The great state of Ohio! The great state of Ohio! It's like, oh, how will we do Howard goes out? That great state of Ohio. How can everybody be great? It's like when, when I, I used to, um, uh, with my, one of my exes, we used to go up to Salem, Massachusetts uh -huh. every year for Halloween. It's a five and a half hour drive, but Ugh. place is packed. It's like Mardi Gras. You know, and, and all, all these, I see all these uh, roast beef sandwich joints. World famous, Kelly's world's famous roast beef. Somebody else. World's famous roast beef. How come I'd never heard of it in New Jersey? If there were what about famous? those two places uh, in, in in Philadelphia uh, that claim to be the original uh, cheesesteak? Cheese steaks. Yeah, they're they're like they're like across they're the right street. Now, yeah, exactly. Exactly. They're across the street, but yeah, but I wouldn't go to either one because the the cheap bastards use. They don't use real I cheese. I think the one only uses Velveeta. I'm not sure about the other. Cheese Whiz, Velveeta, oh, crap. Oh, okay. Now, I only eat real cheese. You know, but anyway, finish Short up. Short one here. Yes. A Chevrolet Camaro used in promotions for pizza chain Papa John's. Oh, oh that scoundrel, that no good bastard. Was found on Monday after being stolen from around a Detroit area event what else showcasing classic cars. Hey, it's Detroit, man. It's Detroit. The car turned up on Detroit's west side after a truck that was hauling the car and a trailer for it were recovered on Sunday. Hmm. The car was spotted in the driveway of a vacant home. A vacant home. home. It was ditched there, huh? Well, I didn't know Papa John had a Camaro, man. Oh, oh, it personally belonged to the son of a bitch. Yes, it was his car. It was a classic. 
Yes. Well, I'm, I'm not surprised. Uh, he's he, he, he's not a um, a very well liked individual. Not anymore. Not anymore. You know, like uh, not not as hated as let's say a Peter Brabeck of Nestle's, but he's hated. He's up there, and deservedly so. Yeah. I just want to say uh, correct you on something. Um, to me, it's good news. Yesterday, I had a uh, um, a talk with the uh, general manager of our local post office, the United States Post Office, uh -huh. and they are they are not privatized yet, and there is no plan in the near future, as he knows, to be privatized. But that, of course, can change with the Republicans controlling the Congress and the Senate, but it is still good old Uncle Sam that controls and owns our post office, so I, I am relieved to hear that. Well, only until the Republicans uh, destroy it by defunding it because of their stupid uh, thing that they have put in, the law that they put in that the post office must put up uh, pension money for the future. Future of what? For the people. Six over six billion dollars or something every year has to be put up for to take care of things that will happen uh, thirty years down the road. They're trying to destroy it so that as you. Uh, What's the uh, UPS, brown? FedEx, UPS and FedEx, and uh, that treat their employees, HL, HL, that, that treat their employees, that treat their employees like shit, yeah. and want to pay them shit. You see, who else is treating their employees like shit and got caught? Uh, uh, Amazon. Amazon. Is that so? Yeah. They built a new warehouse in Hudson County. I heard. Really? Somewhere. Um, it doesn't surprise me. It's it's the it's the American way of doing yeah. business, yeah. and they actually think the masses are just going to accept no benefits and cheap pay and and take it calmly. Take it on the chin, man. Take it on, take the, it chin. on the chin. They really think so. Yeah. All these rotten people. They must have a lot of bodyguards because I never hear about any any of them getting worked over or or shot or anything. You know, all these famous. Yeah. These famous yes, uh, they have bodyguards. evil people that we talk about every week. Yes, they have bodyguards. You know, they, they must. Anyway, time for lunch. Um, we will be joined now by uh, how, to, how to Defeat a Conservatives of uh, Bible Verses. Just simply hit the pause button and read and learn. Followed by William Hamilton Moore of the Third with commercial <laughs> promo. Yeah. Actually, yeah. seven bells for that. Hey. All right. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. 
There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay, we're back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton, tomorrow the 3rd. We're doing promo. And I take it you people learned something with the Bible verses of... Um, how to defeat a conservative, so we will sink our teeth back into these readings. Three liberal advocacy groups have filed a lawsuit against Governor Christie and his presidential campaign arguing that taxpayers should not have to pay for the cost of his security details when he is traveling for political purposes. The governor's office sought nearly $185,000 in reimbursement from the New Jersey State Police for travel-related costs for Christie's security detail for the first three months of the year. Christie running for president is his own choice. The people of New Jersey should not have to pay for that. Bingo. While the governor did spend some time out of the state on vacation, the vast majority of his travel in those months was related to his exploration of the presidential bid. Yeah, well, he made... He made the... The taxpayers of New Jersey pay for his legal fees with Bridgegate. Christie, who formally entered the GOP <coughs> presidential race on June the 30th, has been spending increasingly more time outside New Jersey as he seeks the nomination. The lawsuit was filed by New Jersey Working Families, Blue Wave New Jersey, and New Jersey Citizen Action, all progressive grassroots political advocacy organizations. Chris Christie cannot be allowed to run for president on the dime of New Jersey taxpayers. I agree. If Governor Christie wants to continue his quixotic campaign, he should pay for it from his own campaign coffers <clears throat> instead of forcing hard-working taxpayers to foot the bill. Yeah, but that, yeah, then he doesn't have any money to help the poor, you know, or for Planned Parenthood or anything like that. Christie allots money to help the poor? Uh, what, the, what a bizarre world are you living in? But they're like that, that, that politician, uh, Mr. Trent. They're not obligated to help the poor, period. No, he said God. That's even worse. Yeah, exactly. The Bible God does doesn't not say, want you to help the poor. Yeah, well, yeah. maybe maybe the other God that G.W. Bush used to talk to... You mean Satan? Satan yeah. doesn't want you to help the poor, but not the God of the Bible. Last year, New Jersey Working Families filed an ethics complaint against David Sampson, who was then the chairman of the Port Authority Board, alleging that he had misused the position to benefit clients of his private law firm. Sampson, who was appointed by Christie and has been a close confidant of the governor's, resigned from that post and has since retired from his law firm. 
The lawsuit against Christie, which was filed in Superior Court in Mercer County, alleges that a representative of the governor's office was involved in securing a public facility, Livingston High School, for the governor's campaign kickoff event. Several employees in the governor's office volunteered to staff that event. We've already made clear that there was no government time used for campaign purposes, said Sam Smith, a spokeswoman for Christie's campaign when asked to comment on the lawsuit. Asked to comment on the campaign's decision not to reimburse the state for the cost of Christie's security detail on political trips, Smith said Christie is following the same policy as other New Jersey governors when they traveled outside the state. Mm. She also provided a comment Christie made when asked about security costs by the record. Our local newspaper. His first week on the campaign trail as an official candidate in New Hampshire last month, he said, In the end, anywhere I go, the troopers need to go. Whether I want them to or not. Yeah, so if they need to go because uh, because many people don't don't like him, he needs to pay for them out of his own pocket. So we are going to continue to conduct this in the same way I've always conducted. Yeah, by 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 sticking cheating the, the state. By sticking the bill to somebody else. Thank you. All right. The bills for Christie's security detail for the first quarter of this year are the most recent available. The governor's office submits a memorandum to the state police every few months seeking reimbursement for travel related costs, including hotel stays, transportation, and meals. Well, there's a big item, ain't there? That probably that's probably just as expensive as hiring security. It's Chris Christie's meals. Levity bills. Those costs are not broken out on the bills, and the state has declined to release that specific information. Meals. Saying it could be disclosed how many state troopers are with the governor, which could compromise his security. And you and, and it's obvious Chris Christie has not missed many meals his life. From February 2010, Christie's first full month in office, through March of this year, taxpayers, excuse me, have paid $1.34 million for travel-related security costs. Wow. Some of the biggest bills were submitted last year when Christie traveled the country visiting 36 states and Washington, D.C. as chairman of the Republican Governors Association. So, Christie, the Emperor, Dictator Chris, Chris Christie, feels that, uh, Anything he does personally, he should not have to pay for. Yeah. Or politically. Because um, he thinks very highly of himself, or no. he's just that selfish. Well, you mean you have two choices? You're giving me two choices. Well, I only need it. one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh... Uh, and they they reelected him too in New Jersey. That's the most mind-boggling part of this whole thing. What is mind-boggling is how any Republican ever gets elected. Well, elected by by idiots, of course, imbeciles. But then, after four years of complaining about the person, they get reelected. 
Same thing with Scott Walker of Wisconsin. He got reelected, reelected, reelected. Uh, um, Rick and Scott of the recall, the, the penis head. Rick Scott of Florida, right? Yeah. Reelected. <sighs> well, they're all creating those jobs, man. You know, they're you, shrinking the good. You and uh, and Nathan, you have the same uh, sarcastic uh, sense of humor. Like he, what he said the other day, it went over the person's head. They were yelling at Nathan. He, I says Nathan's only joking around. He's he, <laughs> he's talking about the CEO being a job creator. Yeah, you know, yeah. The um, the CEO, it might have been in response to Trent, the Trent comment. In other words, it, it had to do with no, it was CEO pay. It was CEO pay, like uh, McDonald's, I don't know, doubled or tripled their CEO's pay, mm -hmm. you know, at the expense of everyone else, of course. And, uh, you know, and then and Nathan said something like, yeah, but all those jobs that those CEOs mm -hmm. are creating. Uh, yeah, bookkeepers and uh, CPOs, what's a, what's a CP, CP, CP something? Accountant. Yeah. 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 To figure out how much more money yes, he can yes. screw out of the corporation. Yeah. And they always blame. They blame everything on the stockholders. You know. Uh, well, hey, the stockholders have nothing to do with controlling a company. Not. No, because a stockholder is one that invests by purchasing in common stocks. A common stock is speculative. It's not supposed to be a sure thing. And well, that's what Trump said the other day, where the people invest in his real estate adventures and stuff. That these people are killers, he said. No, they're not little babies like you're thinking of them. They're killers. They know what the hell they're doing. And he knew he knew what he was doing by bailing out of Atlantic City. Yeah. You know, but the point is, there's no guarantees with stocks. So if you're a CEO, you have the right to turn around and say, I have to do the, the, the correct thing for, for my company and my customers. They come first. Uh, you know, that'll be the case. But that's not the case. So, uh, yeah, well, they're just a, uh, what I call them, a, a paper-pushing, blood-sucking parasite, basically. Well, if you ever see the, mo the movie uh, Tucker, The Man and His Dream or whatever it yeah. is, it shows you what the board of directors and stuff are for companies. You know, I mean, they're nothing but figurehead crap and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, they, like the Twilight Zone episode when uh, Richard Deacon, I guess, actor, character actor, the late Richard Deacon played president of the company, and he's walking around twirling his pocket watch, firing people, <laughs> laying people off, and blah blah blah, and then at the end. Robbie the Robot, you mm -hmm. saw him uh, twirling the pocket watch. He replaced Richard Deacon. Mm -hmm. They replaced him with a robot, so he got replaced. Way ahead of his time, that Rod Serling. Oh, yeah. August is like a secret playland for a boy with an imagination and a disdain for school. That was, that was me. I think most kids are like that. I was that boy 54 years ago when I was 10 years old. Immune to humidity, eager to chase as many adventures as possible, yeah. knowing that summer would inevitably end and I would once again be confined to a cold September school desk. You know something? I don't know about cold, but I found uh, the beginning of September after Labor Day weekend to be very depressing as a child because summer vacation was over. The morning of the praying mantis. Ah, yes, the praying mantis. And we salute the praying mantis. The praying mantis. Began with my usual mug of Ovaltine. <laughs> Oh, you mean the sugar-laden American version or the uh, no-sugar uh, uh, European version? 
and a glass of orange juice. And I'm serious about what I just said. I checked my pocket for my magnifying glass, my piece of bo bo bazooka bubblegum, my dime-sized compass, and the dollar I always kept in the in case the ice cream truck drove by. I used to get the bubble gum and the baseball cards. Yeah, yeah Bazooka only had the uh, cartoon. The, the, you know. Yeah. Like in the newspapers. Yeah. The, the, yeah. In Bazooka. Yeah, you, you, with Bazooka, you pretty much got the bubble gum. Uh, I mean, I'm not into gum now, but I used to get the, the flat piece that was shaped like a card. I used to get it with the baseball cards. You know, man, I had so many collectibles, if I still had them today, rookie cards, and, and they all were thrown out. Not by me, though, but if I only had them. The house where I grew up was a three-story American four square, sided with cedar shingles, filled with the clamor of my five brothers and sisters, the aroma of my mother's baked bread, and the sound of my father rustling the newspaper. And the toilet bowl? Mine was an ordinary American childhood blessed with the victory of World War II. Both my parents cheered the American and British troops as they were liberated in Belgium from Nazi occupation in 1945. Mm -hmm. I was born in the stability of financial security, in a house filled with books, with parents who left my sisters and brothers and me with the freedom to read, to play, and imagine as we chose during those hot, memorable summers of so long ago. Like the old song, Good Old Summertime? Lazy, at, hazy, crazy days of summer? At the breakfast. It was my habit to grab my Davy Crockett cocoon skin cap I didn't have that. And rush outside to see what I could find. A frog in the small pond at the edge of the woods. A salamander under the rocks along the summer stream. That's when those creatures existed in the residential area. I used to find all that, all those things. I had toads and green garter snakes in the backyard. I had I had all kind. I mean, and then all of a sudden, when the when the waterways got polluted, which is where this life um, need it needed to be near, to, you know, to reproduce, all those creatures vanished. A bird's nest in the mock orange brushes. Remember all the cicadas when we had a hot summer? We got them now. Yeah. Don't you hear them out there? Deafening, deafening sound. They're out there now, 17 years, whatever it is. I developed an early affection for animals and bugs. Bugs, yeah. I felt like James Henry Trotter in Raoul Dahl's famous book, James and the Giant Peach. James enjoyed his adventures with a grasshopper, centipede, and earthworm. Mine began with the praying mantis. Yeah, centipedes creep me out. I see them around here. They get in the house sometimes. Yeah. They're they they'll bite you, man. They they have venom, but they're not dangerous. You know, it's not like the tropical giant centipedes, but we have them. Sometimes they come up the pipe. They come. I see them come right through the crack of the front door. Yeah. Into the living room. And then I I, I, I I made a loud noise and I went like this with my hand and went right back out. <laughs> you know. I had never seen a praying mantis before. Oh. And as I walked past the rhododendron bushes my and favorite. stared in the direction of the large rock that looked like the back of a giant turtle, I saw what appeared to be a grasshopper. That's another thing we used to have as a kid. Box turtles. It's like looks like a tortoise. We used to have wood turtles. Uh, there was a, it was teeming with life at one time. But of course, 
The closer I walked toward the creature, the bigger it seemed to grow. To my surprise, when I leaned down, the insect didn't jump away. No, they look right at you, man. You remember the praying mantis. It, it's on video that I found here on, on the lamp. I picked it up. I, I have no problem with them. They're great. They're, I think they're smart. But stood on its four legs, reared up in a motionless position that did indeed look like it was praying. Well, they, yeah, they're, they're, they're stalking their prey. I pulled out my plastic magnifying glass from my pocket, closed one eye, as all good boy scientists do, and examined my newfound monster. Yeah, they, oh, they're ravenous. Along with the antennas on its head, it had two horrifying eyes! Alright, is this... That were wide apart! Is this, does this story have a, a punchline or a, or a moral to be learned, or...? I thought you were going through it. Things are not like they used to be. Well, yeah, but it's not its not what you would call hard-hitting truth reading. You know what I mean? Like, hard-hitting truth. Things are not like they used to no, be. No, they're not like they is used to be. Is that not hard-hitting enough? Yeah, it is. You're right. Thank you. Oh, my God. Bells for Dr. Bill. Not bells for St. Mary. The eyes were wide apart, like a space creature from the movie screen. That's what they look like. They look like the like a, the green gray people. You know, the aliens have that skinny neck and the, the, the praying mantis shape, head, big eyes. It had two ugly spiked arms. Hey, its lower body looked like a fierce hornet. What? What the hell does this kid want? He wants Jiminy Cricket to do a dance with a top hat and a cane, singing, uh, If You Wish Upon a Star. What does he want, this kid? I hey. felt like a brave Davy Crockett. This kid's Until not, the bug. This kid's starting to annoy me, man. Until the bug suddenly sprang at me. I was spring at him, too. I didn't know it had wings. Hey, you jackass. <laughs> I didn't know it could fly. Yeah. I didn't know. Paul McCartney had wings at one time, right? What was the if name the praying mantis could inject poisonous venom into, no, into the neck. No, we cannot inject poisonous venom. Maybe a, a big female spider that has a big web. Could not inject poisonous mantis. venom into the neck of a fraudulent mountain man king of the wild frontier. I wish it did have venom. I wish he, I wish he, this kid snuck up on a, a, a dangerous, like a Brazilian wandering spider where if it bites you and you don't go to the emergency room, you're a goner. This kid's annoying me, man. I ran back past the rhododendrons, waving my arms above my head, hoping to beat away what I imagined to be Rodan, the famous giant flying monster in the iconic 1956 Japanese movie. Rodan, the first Rodan is 1956? 1956. I didn't know that. I know Godzilla with Raymond Burr was in the 50s. This, this, this kid is um, got quite an, well, he's a kid, right? Not anymore. He's got an imagination. He's an editorial writer right now. Oh. In a panic, I told my father what I found. And he gave me a small paperback book on insects. Let me tell you something. Well, that's what happened to me. I, I had got, I was given books, and I and I and I used to. Uh, my grandfather used to subscribe to National Geographic, and I used. Oh, to and you looked at all them black breasts bouncing around in those African ladies bouncing around. Come on, come on, well, admit there it. Were, there were other articles there too. Oh yeah, sure, but uh. You know, I mean, but hey, I know, read the articles in Hustler, you know. Well, because they're, they're Larry Flint is uh, is a very is a smart man. Yeah, he's very politically involved in a progressive man. Wait, but, but you know, I, I rode by the house I grew up in. Everything seems so much smaller now. 
the world was so huge when I was a kid. My dad sat down with me on the couch and read aloud the attributes of the praying mantis. I learned that they eat bugs and their mates. Yeah, the male is puny. Like, like with spiders, the female is huge and the male is skinny and puny and small. And their only function is to mate and run. But even if they run, Bill, even if they escape, their lifespan is naturally short. Compared or to the next female. time they want to mate. <laughs> they, become they may have been lucky that time. They become food for the, for the, uh, for the nymphs, the, for the offspring. But even if they are lucky to escape, males, male spiders, mantises do not have a long lifespan they, they, compared to the female. They just have a pathetic life. Yeah, because that's what their uh, that's what their uh, yeah worse than their job in life. Worse is. than human uh, men of today. They have a much more pathetic life. I mean, like that uh, the seal the other day. Yeah, was lucky to get away from that great white. Very lucky. But that don't always happen. No, because the great the whites, seal usually loses. The great whites are. Um, there may, they may be fish, but they learn how to hunt seals from underneath. They come crashing from underneath without warning. Anyway, to repeat, I learned that they eat bugs and their mates, but not ten-year-old boys. <laughs> when I told my mother about this giant insect I found in the yard, she told me that in Africa it was considered long ago to be a god. A mantis? See, I'm just learning this now. A deity. The word mantis is from the Greek, meaning prophet. I didn't know that. Oh, that's where the word praying comes from, maybe. Praying mantis. Mantis? Mantis? Praying man prophet. Mantid. The, the, the species is collectively is called mantid. Mantids. So the mantis is a Greek word meaning prophet. Interesting. When I tried to convince my brothers that I found a dragon, they looked at me and they laughed. Uh, that September I was back in school, yep. learning about fractions, Rodin. diagramming sentences, being forced to twist my penmanship into the standard stilted loops of the Palmer method. August is a time for children to sit on the back porch and spit out watermelon seeds. A time to swim, build tree forts, play stickball, climb trees, and look for frogs. But then as the song Friends. by the folk rock group The Birds says, turn, turn, turn. The seasons. The calendar quickly turns to reveal the month of September. Hey, autumn's a beautiful season to me. The boy is suddenly shackled to a desk. The boy becomes a man. And the man still imagines what it might have been like if he had hopped onto the back of the praying mantis as they whirred up into the magical air of August heat in pursuit of the ice cream truck. This, this person must have been really hitting the bottle big time or high on something or it's very miserable in his existence despite, so, his, despite his career. Certainly uh, very nostalgic yeah, yeah, for okay. the old days. Now to want uh, the desire to hop on the back of a wing, a giant winged uh, a creature means that he might have a desire to escape something and fly away from something. They I'm, did, I'm it. They did to, it in the movie Avatar. I'm trying to look at it from a psychologist's point of view. He, they were riding on the dragons. He wants to hop on the back of a winged creature, which means he wants to fly away from the life he knows, you know, without reading too much into The boring it. life he's living now. 
yeah. It's almost um, it's yeah. almost like a Twilight Zone episode. Yeah, I, I could dig it, man. I could dig it. I could dig it. We'll give it some bells. How are we doing for time? Probably not this good. This is the last one, I guess. Okay, last one. Mayor Bill de Blasio of New York great, great has man. launched a multi-agency task force to address what he calls the growing problem of panhandling topless women and costume characters in Times Square. Um, topless women have been walking around Times Square for a woman to be topless. Gee, something exciting for uh, for tourists visiting New York City now. Well, Mr. de Blasio Interesting. does not like it. Look, even if you're a man, if you're in a, a such a congested, busy part of New York City where, the, where there is tourists and Broadway shows and, and theater and restaurants and cafes and blah 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 and lights everywhere even for a man to walk around without a shirt is inappropriate attire now a woman she's looking for trouble I know she can legally do it but and I know the breast is well she it's look, a business she's They're at, looking for moolah Who's looking for Mula? These women and the costume characters in Times Square. The women are hookers? They are mean? looking for money. You can have your picture taken with them. With the topless girl. Oh, they're trying to turn... Oh, a little, a little scam going on it's capitalism, here. Capitalism, my friend. Panhand... A, a legalized... A uh, 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 glorified panhandling... Uh, 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 with a gimmick. Yeah. Looking for to make money off of their yeah. this is see this is why I always get into arguments on my fitness group. It's like um, people take an ancient martial art with ancient warrior exercises Ooh. with a with a a way of life like all martial arts a way of life and a specific mentality that goes with that uh, uh, craft, if you want to call it that. And these people just take all this that's supposed to be based on humility and giving, and they take it and they try to make a, a, a money-making enterprise out of it. They capitalize, they exploit it, they charge high amounts of money to go to their seminars and workshops and 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 they, they 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 manufacture overpriced exercise tools from this ancient system, this ancient martial arts system, and it just I, it just infuriates me how people take every friggin' thing in existence in life and exploit and exploit it into a money-making venture. Capitalism! Yeah! It it. Everything's about money with capitalism. Meanwhile, Mr. de Blasio said... Freddy Blasio? That one option under consideration is removing the famed intersections pedestrian plazas. Yeah, but what about how are the tourists going to like kind of stop and take pictures? The plazas are popular with tourists, theater goers and office workers who throng Times Square daily and are a signature accomplishment of de Blasio's predecessor, Michael Bloomberg. Make them, listen to me, make Mr. de Blasio, Mr. Freddy Blasio. <laughs> oh, jeez. Mr. Progressive Liberal, I guess. Mayor. Supposedly. Supposedly. Endorse Bernie, because you're you're more progressive than most Democrats, Freddie Blatt, I mean, uh, Bill de Blasio. Listen to me. Make these panhandlers purchase a an, an monthly or an annual permit. 
make them pay just like uh, street performers have to buy a permit, $40 a day, to perform with their musical instrument on the streets of New York for money. They have to get a permit. They probably do have that because they none of them were arrested. Uh, um, Okay, uh, and they don't street, arrest street the, performers. Permit. They don't arrest the Batman and the Spider-Man costume characters, oh, that guy, et cetera, You know, the cowboy that's out in the winter and time too, with a little yeah. little uh, g-string or speedo. So they must have some sort of license Listen, or whatever. You make you you you're making money off of. First of all, you have uh, for a any business, whether it be panhandling or not. Your you're taking advantage of the fact that New York, that Manhattan, has the traffic of bodies going back and forth day and night. And tourists. Tourists. Okay, now, that's why the rents are so high if you open up Bingo! a... If you open up a business in a shopping mall, the rents are very high because they give you the traffic. New York, Manhattan provides you with the traffic. Businesses, restaurants, uh, I'm sure office space costs a fortune in Midtown Manhattan. So you're there making money, hand over fist, you know, and, and let me tell you something. Uh, panhandling donations and anybody working on tips, if you have the right gimmick, you can make a lot of money on gratuities. So these people, these topless girls and these people with you know who's playing a jug and a washboard and you know hey, who's hey, playing hey. who's playing harmonica who's you know uh, uh, playing a little jazz on a uh, on a trumpet and the ch and the girl that just stands there with her breast hanging out should purchase permits that's it as i say they must have some or they would have arrested them. Okay, so they must have some protection already. They have been hailed by urban planners as an innovation in city design. But the popular spots have also become favored stomping grounds for aggressive panhandlers. Dressed as characters like Elmo and Batman. And more recently for topless women wearing body paint and thongs and seeking money to pose for photographs. Oh, they're wearing a thong too, also? And the topless? Oh gee, what's next? Total nudity in Times Square? The painted lady's presence has become a tabloid sensation during the sleepy end of summer, with editorial pages warning that they foreshadow a return to Times Square's seedy Oh, sure. When Mr. Giuliani cleaned it all up. Oh yeah, the peep, the peep shows. Yeah. The, the um, um, yeah, the adult district. Yeah. He, he chased, he chased them to an, another area. I don't think it's appropriate in one of the busiest squares in New York City for women to display themselves that way, Mr. De Blasio said. But the mayor acknowledges that because both public toplessness and panhandling are legal in New York, the city's immediate recourse is limited. He has suggested that because the women are engaging in a business transaction, they should be subject to city regulation. So he commissioned a task force led by Police Commissioner William Bratton and City Planning Commissioner Carl Weisbrod to explore other options. Among the women who accept tips for their photos, Sierra Nicole doesn't believe the practice should be an issue. People are having fun. Sure, she's making money doing it. There's no problem, she said. Buy a per have her buy a permit. Another, Angel Bunting, said she doesn't aggressively pan him. Isn't that a bird, a bunting? Yeah. 
Bunting is, uh, you know when a fireman or policeman dies? Yeah. And they put up that black, purple cloth, like crescent shape? Yeah. It's Bunting. You know when a, like a political table? Yeah. They have the tablecloth yeah. that goes up for Bunting. And that red, white, and blue, uh, yeah. a French thing. Bunting. Some of the girls are maybe a little more aggressive. But we do not work that way. We wouldn't want somebody touching us. We also wouldn't want somebody touching our child. Absolutely not. Mm, they're asking for trouble. I mean, I mean, if you're if you're going to be naked and you're going to tease men, uh, eventually there's going to be problems because not everybody. You, you do that to is going to be nice. One possibility being considered is a separate zone just for the women. Another is to require them to obtain a license. There you go. And then Bratton shocked the civic minded by suggesting that the city do away with the pedestrian plaza. Yeah, but that would affect the tourism of Midtown Manhattan, right? I'd prefer to just dig the whole damn thing up and put it back the way it was, he said. How was it before? Probably was a dirt, a dirt road. <laughs> we just have, just have streets and sidewalks, I mean. When he says pedestrian plazas, is it like a like a like a little mini park or a clearing? It's a yeah, it's a uh, it's a uh, area where cars don't go. And people just like hang out there. Yeah, they walk. What about down downtown uh, downtown hacky sack? Yeah, Main With Street. With the the uh, pedestrian uh, what's it called? There's no cars allowed there. No, no. Like Hackensack, Main Street. Hacky sack doesn't have that. Yeah, Main Street. No, Main Street. Now Main Street. Main Street now. Well, you haven't been to Main Street in a long time. Main Street now is not a ghost town anymore. It's it's, it's all filled up with restaurants and cafes yeah. and stores. But that's that's not cars there. That's pedestrian no, walkways. No, there, there's oh, just one street. One street has this little mini mini park near the courthouse. Oh, that's down Hudson Street there. Yeah, yeah that's going towards the that's Ar Army Navy stores, going towards Hudson. But that's just one itty bitty little area. Yeah. Most well, of it is just sidewalk and street, no, and, you know. And a little bit up north, it's all pedestrian walkway. Oh. Anyway. Anywho. Things have changed. I'm sure they have. It's, it's like I said. It used to be a ghost town. No longer. Which is good for the city. I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's good for businesses because, honestly, I don't know what they pay. I know, I know, in in suburban uh, Bergen County, the rents and the leases for having a store are astronomically Ridiculous. high. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. It, it, totally, totally insane. Yeah. I mean, how how many? Look how many customers you need just to break even and pay the rent on your store. Well, it used to be I mean, that sales. one one uh, one person yeah. in the family earns a, a living, could have supported a family and a car and a house and etc. Now even two people doing that cannot do it. Well, imagine what it's going to cost with these rents in New York and in places like Bergen County. Oh, in they, New Jersey. they cut the... Uh, you need four or five people to they, share the rent. They cut the studio apartments in half in Manhattan. New York City, Manhattan. They cut them in half. They're like little little pigeon coops. You know, that they want uh, $2,500 a month for or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's insane. It's, it's a... You know, this, this concept of supply and demand oh. is really not very, like, ethical. Because, okay, capitalism is not. Ethical. You have the supply, and then just because the demand goes up, it gives the supplier an excuse to raise the price to gouge 
to price gouge and rip off the consumer. You saw what happened in Katrina with bottles of water. Perfect uh -huh. example. Bingo! In other words, instead of humanitarian uh, uh, individuals giving things to the Hurricane Katrina victims, somebody decided to sell things. Humanitarians don't make money. But you have to they make, are fools so you have to, to So Rand. you have to make money and exploit people that are in a crisis? Yes. People that are in need? Iron Rand! You have to make money off of them? That's the Iron Rand philosophy. Well, Iron Rand okay. must have had, uh, did she have a lot of bodyguards too? No, she did not. So nobody kicked her she ass? She had a lot of influential friends such as Alan Greenspan and etc. Coming to her apartment every so, week for a meeting. No empathy or compassion whatsoever. No, that is a weakness. That shows a weakness upon yourself. What, what about friend. greed? Is that is that a strong point? Exactly. In court, according to exactly. her. Exactly. Self-interest. Yeah. So she. Uh, so everything. Everything is like totally about self. Uh, That's correct. Me, me, uh, give me, give me, grab, take, take, take. That's correct. And not give. That's correct. Very short arms, very deep pockets. That's what Alan Greenspan said. He said he didn't understand. He was shocked when his philosophy of life blew up in his face. He didn't think that these people on Wall Street who, uh, you know, were in it for their own interest would do such things. Oh, really? Yeah. He didn't know That's anything. What he said. Yeah. yeah. Well, was he, he was wasn't shocked. he wasn't he kind of dumbfounded when Bernie Sanders was letting him have it? Uh, he didn't say a word. He had a stupid smile on his face. He looked like the, Chesh the Cheshire Cat. Didn't say a word, and then when he did say something, he changed the subject. Oh, how appropriate! <laughs> exactly. Didn't say a word. Well, I have a feeling that a lot of people on Capitol Hill would just let Bernie talk and not say a word because they have no defense against the real truth. They have no defense and if if it doesn't get out, it won't get to the general public and they'll be okay. Well, if they See? if they try to rebuttal and oh, debate no. Bernie, they will look like fools. They will look worse. And then it will get out to the media because, because the media will love Fight. Because because the you media will fight. say Bernie Sanders destroys a half a dozen uh, uh, Republicans in a debate. He he demolishes them. He makes them look ridiculous. And that's what would happen because the Republicans will end up doing Ralph Cramden, humming, 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 humming. Yeah. They, they, exactly. Because they have no come back, no proven, cold hard fact, scientific comeback. There there is no there's nothing. Nothing substantial in in the in the debating. Well, of, unfortunately, of a Republican, their supporters do not require that. Their you supporters. see, their supporters will always say, "I'm a poor slob. I'm on snap. I'm this that, the other." But I voted for okay. a Republican um, because those middle billionaires need tax cuts. Remember, I'm glad you brought this up. Remember the video. The rather long video of uh, when Bernie Sanders recently entered the home of a Louisiana family. It wouldn't play for me. Yeah, and it was on YouTube too. I know. And it was a Louisiana family, and they and they claimed it was the reason why the camera person sucked because I, the camera person really, really, really was a retard, and people that knew the family and people that were there in person says that the reason why but there's no, there's no excuse for the camera person uh, going towards the ceiling or taking a video of somebody's back you say excuse me move aside please We've got the can you're blocking the camera or the person should have the, the, the common sense and courtesy to do it by themselves but the Some he's, amateur he's going up he's going down by the floor he's going up to the ceiling he's, all right anyway aside from that he says they had 70 people and it was packed. Bernie Sanders was uh, allowing a lot of people to talk and a lot of great points were made. He 
is doing this on purpose. He is visiting the red states and talking to the the folks in the red states because he wants to see how they feel and he wants to talk to them because he feels I guess he feels like if he visits a progressive person's house in the Northeast, they're all going to just love him and offer him food and dessert and, and, and everything, everything's going to be hunky-dory. But he's more needed in a red state family's house. He, I guess he feels the challenge is good for his campaign. So it came up that a person was saying, look, the subject was why do people in, in the South and out West, in red states, why do poor people, low-income people, always continue to vote Republican? And, and the person was saying, uh, two people I think were saying, see the problem here in the South is that we are multi-generation Republicans. Okay, our fathers, our grandparents, and I'll be honest with you, we, we vote the same because we're afraid of change. We're afraid of going with something that is different. And, that, and that's, a, that, that's a flaw. That's a, that's a human flaw. Fear is what causes us to continue to vote Republican when we don't have a pot to piss in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fear of something different. I guess fear of the unknown. So Bernie appreciated that answer. He did actually, he's doing quite well talking to these people in these states. He's really better than expected. But anyway, I just wanted to, hopefully you'll get to see the video. And of course, um, that's it. Um, um, fear of change, fear of going with something completely different than what you grew up with. That's right. That's the conservative mindset. They 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 grew up a certain way. They're locked in. They're afraid to break out of that trap. Like a, trap. this friend of mine, who um, is uh, voting for Ben Carson. Oh gosh. Uh, because he's a Republican, this and the other thing. Uh. And what he was saying was that he was talking as if Ben Carson is a Republican of the old strike. What? Before, before the change, when the Dixiecrats became, but, you know, the, when the Republicans became Dixie, you know, when they changed. But, but when Democrats and Republicans changed. But has Ben Carson come up with any solutions? Ben Carson doesn't even know the Constitution. And and this boob But it's like likes number them. two or number three or number four in the polls. Yeah, but look at the clown bus. It's very it's it's easy to understand why a Donald Trump and a Ben Carson would excel. Look at their competition. Yeah, well the point is though that they 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 are excelling, but they're excelling by people who actually won't vote for them. These people because if you really look at them, they are selling change. Both of them. Yes. See. And and of course, Bernie. And the actual conservative don't like that. And of course, Bernie's selling the greatest change of all. Whoa! You know, He's a socialist. I know come you, on, man! I know you're demon. Come on, man! What's wrong? I'll, I'll I'll say the same thing Bernie said once. What's wrong with socialism? I, Nothing. I, I, I like it. I, it's Nothing. very, it's very fair. Nothing's wrong with socialism. You're a poor slob. You don't have a pot to piss in. Hey, are you happy with your life? Are you really happy with your life? Well, if you're not happy with it, maybe it's time for a big change. But capitalism lifts so many people up. Who? Capitalism. It does. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That's what, uh, that's what, uh, uh, no other economic system has that that's done. what a teabagger would, would say, and I know a few of them, they say, uh, oh yeah, you know, uh, they, I know people, he says, oh, my father started off with nothing, uh, he didn't have two nickels to rub together, hey, what, yeah. 
you know, get out there and work and, and, and work hard and dedicate yourself. Work hard. Hey, working, the only way you make it is if you get big breaks in life. But why is it the mindset that we should be working for the man? You'll never what be What happened ahead. to the mindset that we should be working for ourselves? That's what it should be. Correct. You should own your way of making a living. You uh -huh. should have control over your uh -huh. life. The way it was before the Industrial Revolution, you should have control of you. Yeah. That's called freedom, isn't it? Yeah. Uh -huh. You shouldn't have to be, be price gouged. Uh, with your with groceries, I mean groceries, food. It's insane what families end up spending when they go shopping. It's it, the man. You're 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 enslaved to the man. To the man. Corporations. Mm. Your job. Mm. Shopping. And they just accept it as if it's the you know been going on forever. It's the way things are. Waiting it's like what Billy Morrow says. Oh, yeah. Well, it's the policy. It's the company policy. Yes. Oh. And we should accept it. Oh, it's company. So what does that mean? It's company policy. Uh, uh, what does that mean? Does that, does that mean it's right? Does that mean it's fair? Does that mean it's ethical? So what, what does that mean? Oh, that's the way it is. Uh, well, it is the way it is because the, the CEO of the companies... Well, we want to change that, don't we? Yeah. I well... Mean, I mean, I wouldn't put a pass to the sleazy American car dealers that own the dealership. Yeah. I wouldn't put it past to them coming up with this idea of, of we're not going to give you a spare tire or, or a tube. or We're going to sell you the tube for $400 a piece. It's saving us money from making the tire and then it's making us money but by selling it but more than fucking. They're making or money. Following you. They're making money by screwing you. Yeah. They're saving money by not giving it to you. Yeah. They're making an extra four hundred bucks for the idiots that buy, buy it. it. Yeah. Holy crap! Uh, it, bring the siphon up. Oh, you put it away. I put it away. It is. It's all siphoning up, baby. Brother, it is the devil's economics. Without a shadow of a doubt, capitalism is the devil's economics. Go, Bernie Sanders. And on that note. So long. Take care. Why I know where we're going. Why did they say so long? Is that have to do because with the, so does that have to do with the porno industry? So no, long. No, the porno industry, you know, didn't exist in these yeah. terms. Hey, what about ago. Duggar? They said he. Oh, he, that he, idiot! What about uh, on the newspaper? It says he'll he'll have no trouble finding a foot long, a foot long in prison where he's going. Now he. You know what? He'll never have that trouble finding. What? Forgive. He, was he one of those family values conservatives? Yes, absolutely. You know, and then they had they showed Rush Limbaugh and all the shit he did. Listen, I always say the people who scream, who shout the loudest and brag the loudest and are obnoxious about, you know, telling you how to live your the life. Jimmy Swaggers. They have more skeletons in their closet than the quiet people. The people that are the loudest. You'll see. All right. You just have to have their day. That's all. That's it. That's it. All right. That's all. Say, uh, speaking of so long, so say long. so long to these jabronis. So long, jabronis. Yeah. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.